A modal response spectrum analysis is a more elaborate type of seismic analysis. Response spectra are plots of maximum response, either acceleration or displacement, of single degree of freedom systems subject to specific excitation. Over the next series of videos, we will show you how to perform a modal response spectrum analysis in STAD Pro, which will include the process to define your dynamic masses and your response spectra load item. We will show you how to specify the maximum number of mode shapes, generate your load combinations, and review the analysis results to ensure that they are in accordance with the requirements of the ASCE 7. The next step in preparing your STAD Pro model to perform a modal response spectrum analysis is to set up your response spectra load items. For our sample model in today's training class, we are going to be setting up four different spectrum commands to represent your seismic load acting in your positive and negative x global axis direction, along with your positive and negative z global axis direction. When you define your response spectra load item, we will set up a variety of parameters. First, we'll specify our appropriate building code along with all the appropriate parameters that will be used to help STAD Pro calculate the seismic load. We will also define your combination method, which is used to specify how to combine the contribution from the individual modes. And we have several options available here, including the complete quadratic combination method and also the square root of the sum of the squares. We will also set up our direction parameter, which is used to specify the global direction in which the spectrum is to be applied. And also we have some options to sign the response spectrum results, which is used to select one of the methods available to add mathematical signs to the spectrum response output. Now since frequencies and modes must be calculated when a dynamic analysis is performed, STAD Pro will automatically carry out a frequency extraction without requiring an additional command to perform the modal calculation. Before we define a response spectrum load item, we will first discuss the signed response spectrum results options. It is important to understand that once the combination method, such as a square root of the sum of the squares or a complete quadratic combination, is applied to response spectra analysis results, the algebraic sign of the results is typically lost. Consequently, the raw results of a spectrum analysis, like displacements, forces, and reactions, are listed in absolute value. To make the results more useful in design situations, STAD Pro has implemented several methods to artificially determine the algebraic sign to associate with the results. And then click on the Add button. In the Add New Load Items dialog, we're now ready to define our first response spectrum load item. In the Load and Definition dialog, I will find my first dynamic load case, which represents my dynamic load in the positive x direction. I will highlight this load case and then click on the Add button. In the Add New Load Items dialog, I will go over to the left pane and find the response spectra load item. Here I can enter a variety of parameters. For this sample model, we are going to be using the IBC 2006 code, and then we will enter all of our appropriate code parameters, which we found out of the ASCE 7 or the IBC codes, including my long period transition, my FA and my FV values, my site class, and then also my S, S, and S1 value, which can be looked up by STAT Pro by simply entering the zip code of your location. Next, I'm going to select my combination method. And for this class today, we are going to be using the complete quadratic combination method, which I will find in the pull down menu. The next option I need to select is the direction for which this seismic load will be acting. And for this particular load case, it represents seismic load in the positive x direction. So I will select the x checkbox and enter a direction of 1.0. I can also enter my damping type, I will consider damping, of 5% for this sample model. 
And then finally, I'll decide whether or not I want STAD Pro to consider some signed results for my response spectrum analysis. And so here I will select the dominant checkbox and also the signed checkbox. After I enter all of my parameters for my first response spectrum load case, I will then click on the add button followed by close. We are now ready to create the other response spectrum load items for each of the load cases. Now all of the parameters for each of the items within those response spectrum load items will be the same except for the direction field which will define how the seismic load is acting on the model. So I'll select my next dynamic load case and again click the add button and I will go to the response spectra load item and then enter all of the parameters just as I had done previously. This time in the direction field, I will still select the X direction checkbox, but I will define the factor as a negative 1.0. And then I will click on the Add button. And I will continue this same exact process for my seismic load acting in my positive and negative Z global axis directions. After we create all of our dynamic load cases, we do have the ability to automatically generate our load combinations, which will consider the loading type that we set up when we defined each of our individual load cases. If I scroll up in our load and definition dialog, I'm going to now highlight my load case details section, and then I'm going to click on the add button. In the add new load cases dialog, I'm going to find my auto load combination option to automatically generate my load combinations in STAD Pro. Now in STAD Pro we have two different options for generating your load combinations. We can create repeat load cases or just standard load combinations. When you are using dynamic loadings in the form of a response spectra analysis, STAD Pro will require you to generate your standard load combinations instead of repeat load combinations. A standard load combination is a load combination where your sets of load results which are combined algebraically to produce a superimposed set of results for post-processing. To automatically combine our loads using this type of method, I'm going to first select my load combination generator that I want to use, then I'm going to select the AISC option, and then I'm going to select the general category. I'm going to leave this checkbox unselected and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the Generate Loads button. After I've completed this process to officially create these load combinations, I can click the Add button, followed by Close. To specify the Cutoff Mode Shape command, we will go up to the Commands menu bar item, select Miscellaneous, followed by the Cutoff Mode Shape item. In the cutoff mode shape dialog, we will specify an initial number for the maximum number of mode shapes. Then, after the analysis is complete, we will check our mass participation for the model, and then we may have to increase or decrease this number depending upon the results. For our first run, we will enter a maximum number of mode shapes as 20, and then we'll go ahead and click OK. It's also important to STAD to make sure 
that you save your model before performing an analysis. Next we will specify our analysis command. Over in the page control area we will select the analysis print tab and for this run we will be performing a traditional analysis in STAT Pro. In the analysis print commands dialog we will select the options to show the mode shapes in the output file and then we will go ahead and click the add button followed by close. Once we are ready to perform the analysis, we will save the model and then select Analyze, Run Analysis in the menu bar. After the analysis is complete, we will be able to review our mass participation and base shear results in the output file. In the output file, we will click on the results bar and since we set, selected the mode shapes in the analysis command, we have some additional quick links over in this results bar. We will go ahead and click on the participation factors item to get some information on the participation for each mode of the model. Now we can see in this run that we have not achieved 90% mass participation in the global horizontal z-axis direction. So before we review any more results, we will exit out of the output viewer and then increase the number of modes until we have at least 90% participation in both directions. To exit the output viewer, we will go File, Exit, and then we will re-invoke the Cutoff Mode Shape command. Again, this can be found under the Commands menu, Miscellaneous, followed by Cutoff Mode Shape. This time, we'll increase the maximum number of mode shapes to 55, and then we'll click OK and we can re-perform the analysis. To re-perform the analysis, we will just go back to our Analyze menu and say Run Analysis. After the analysis is complete, again we will return to the output file and review our new mass participation results. Here if we scroll down we can see that we have achieved more than 90% mass participation in each of the horizontal global axis directions. So 55 modes for this particular model seems appropriate. In addition to reviewing our mass participation results in our output file, we should also review our base shear for both our dynamic analysis and also the equivalent lateral force procedure to ensure that those are in compliance with the building code as well. Here within the mass participation table, I can see what the base shear in each direction is. Here is in the positive x direction, and as I scroll through, I can again select participation factors. Scroll down, and here's the base shear in the negative x direction. and also in the positive Z and X direction. If I scroll up in the output file, I also have information since for this sample model we set up an equivalent lateral force procedure, load cases, I also have some information there. Here I can see the base shear in the X direction for the seismic IBC seismic load case and also in the Z direction. Once I'm done reviewing this information, I will return back to my STAD Pro model and adjust my scale factors. I modify the scale factor for each of our seismic load cases. We will return to the General tab in the Page Control area, followed by the Load and Definition sub-tab. Here we will expand our Load Case Details section and modify each of our dynamic load cases. To edit a load case after you create it, we would just highlight our dynamic load case and then we'll go ahead and click on the edit button. This will bring us right back with all of our response spectrum parameters and we will need to change our scale factor in our X and Z directions. For our X direction, the scale factor should be 0 0.023, so we will make that change here and then we'll go ahead and click on the change button. 
and then we will repeat this process for the other dynamic load case, this time in the negative x direction. And we will keep the negative sign, but we'll change the scale factor to 0 0.023. And we will again repeat this for the z direction. Once you have finished that process, we will go ahead and then we're ready to reanalyze. To perform the analysis, we will go up to our menu bar, select Analyze, Run Analysis. We now know that our mass participation factors and our scale factors are appropriate and in compliance with the ASCE 7 building code. Now at this point we can continue to review some more results in the output file or we also have several dynamic results that we're able to be able to see in the graphical user interface through the post processor. To access the post processor we will click on this go to post processing mode radio button and then click done. In the Results Setup dialog, we will go over and select the Results View Options tab and we will enable automatic scaling. This will make it a little easier for us to be able to see our results, including our deflection results. And we will go ahead and select our mode shapes along with all these other options as well. One of the first sets of results we're going to review is our Member Force results. If we go over to our page control area, we can select the beam tab followed by the forces sub tab. Now we can review the member force results for our bending or shear right in our main graphical user interface. And we can select the different options by selecting the different load cases available from our results pull down menu. Here we are showing our dynamic load in the positive x direction. Now when we had set up our load cases for our response spectrum analysis, we did instruct the program to consider a sign in our results. And we can notice that we do have results in our dynamic load cases issued for positive and negative. Also, since we did perform a dynamic analysis, we do have some dynamic results available. If I go over to the page control area, I can click on the dynamics tab in the modes sub tab. Here I can see the mode shape for each mode in each dynamic load case in the model. To select from the different load cases, I could just use my load case pull down menu. And to select the different modes in the model, I can use my mode pull down menu. And I will be allowed to see any mode that I included in the calculation.